Realtors are independent contractors. I mean, we are just going to go there. We're going to talk about what is the elephant in the room because there is so much misinformation about the settlement news, what it's going to do to real estate, how it's going to help drive prices down on homes, how it's free. I mean, there is just so much misinformation. So I would like to clear something up for you. And yep, it means I'm going down the rabbit hole. So realtors are independent contractors. They have no benefits. There is nothing to show at the end of their time of service unless they have specifically invested or put money back for their retirement. There's no employee benefits, no health insurance, nothing, nada. So why is the government so interested in what realtors are doing and what they are charging? I mean, more to the point, why are they trying to control this industry? When so many other industries charge whatever, do whatever they want, cost of eggs, gasoline, interest rates, any of those options, uh, something that you're interested in, knowing why it costs so much? With this settlement, the fact is that what they have done or allowed to be done is actually hurt the middle to lower class. It's changing the way that compensation to realtors has been handled for over 100 years. And in the process, that change has pushed people who should be protected to now be inadvertently targeted. And which, by the way, I think is considered a fair housing discrimination. Let's dive into that. So what does that mean? So a first-time home buyer knows that they have to have some money to come into the house buying situation, but they may really be struggling because prices are high, interest rates are high. And so now, on top of that, they're being told that they specifically are now paying for the cost of their buyer agent. Now, granted, buyer's agents were being compensated. It was just through a reciprocal agreement in the MLS that allowed for a seller to designate the funds to go also to pay for the buyer's agent. So this is an important thing to understand that the service has always been paid for by the seller on behalf of the buyer. And this is negotiated at the listing of the home and cooperatively indicated through our MLS. So the settlement changes all of that. Coming up in later this year, when this is all finalized, and you've already seen or started to hear about this, that this process has changed. It's not going to be done the way that it has been done before. Why is that a problem? Because as a buyer, you can't, prior to this, can't have your buyer agent commission included in the loan. So you don't want to pay for it over 30 years, but even if you wanted to, you can't because the loan requirements does not include that compensation allowable. If you're a FHA, VA, any USDA, any specialty government-backed program, this was not something that was allowed to happen. Now, they are all talking about this. They're all trying to figure out how do we navigate this change that's coming about but in the meantime, a whole group of people are finding that they're going to be now hindered by this settlement change because now I have to make sure that I'm including my buyer agent commission in that money that I need out of pocket in order to secure the purchase of the home that I want. Yes, they paid for it with the seller having a price on a home, and it was included in there. If you get down to the semantics of it, it's always been paid. It was just done in a way that was cooperatively, <laughs> that was cooperatively considered and agreeable to parties. If they were genuinely interested in making sure that the costs were not getting out of control or that unfair usury charges were not being incurred, then just like how the state controls what the title insurance charges are, why aren't the states controlling what the lenders charge? Does the buyer get to negotiate either of those charges in the home buying process? 
or the selling process? No. They don't like what one lender is charging. They can go to another lender. If they don't like what the title charges are, they can choose not to get the title insurance. So the same is true with realtors. If you don't like the fee of one, you could find another agent, potentially, who would charge less or different. Or you could choose not to use an agent at all. But why have the industry change impact people to where the first option is not use somebody and to save money because the buyer beware is going to become an even bigger issue without the expertise, the fiduciary responsibility of those licensed to represent them being in the picture. And in the states where there are attorneys used for real estate practices, um, who controls those fees? Has that been considered? To make the industry change their business practices seems a bit overkill and overreach as the government's position. While extreme, extremely limiting to our individual rights to conduct business and for consumers to have fair and reasonable choices that allow them to pursue and secure their rights to home ownership. In the same breath that that settlement was announced, it's odd, mm, strange, coincidental, or even a conspiracy, that HUD announced millions of dollars is going to be placed into allocating towards employees of HUD being trained housing advocates. Seems to me we already had a system in place where people had a fiduciary responsibility to be housing advocates and to be paid and compensated through the process. Many of us with years of experience in the industry and who have been advocates for our clients, the process, and our industry. So on one hand, they want to take a swipe against the process, but now they want to insert their own. Really? The writing is on the wall that no one is really paying any attention to and help us all if it happens. The fact that small business, independent thinking, and someone working for the better good of another is being attacked. And it's taking out a large segment of our potential home ownership people who will either be pushed into a rental pool or government-based housing. Because let's face it, if the government can control this, then why the hell are they not controlling the gas prices? When stationed on the east corner and on the west corner and then the one on the north corner all raise their prices at the same time, at the same amount, because of what day of the week it is, or what's the season, or what news was just reported, how is that not a problem? Or let's talk about this, the real elephant in the room. Credit card charges, 29.9% APR, and nobody has a problem with that in the government? They're not looking to make changes in that and how consumers are being negatively impacted? Scheme. The government doesn't have a problem with that? High interest rates that are being charged on credit cards to consumers? Just don't get me started. <laughs>